Today marks 10 years that MTV has been unwinding music videos, if you're counting some 730,000 of them. And how did it all begin? Well, we're glad you asked. This is how it all began. It was something called a music video, and this one was the first to air on a new kind of television, MTV, music television. In short order, the channel developed an unmistakable look, a trademark mix of fast-paced and dazzling visuals. Well, I need somebody. The MTV look invaded the culture, and it wasn't long before commercials and television shows had it too. I want my MTV. Meanwhile, MTV sold records, and its image making is said to have boosted the careers of artists like Paula Abdul, Janet Jackson, and Billy Idol. But along with the success has come criticism, claims that some videos promote sexism or have fostered an empty MTV generation less concerned with substance than with hype and image. I'm gonna kiss you in Paris. Some images went too far for MTV, which refused to air Madonna's racy Justify My Love video and Neil Young's This Notes For You, which attacked performers pushing products. They eventually did air Young's clip. And MTV has evolved, launching programs you might not have seen on the channel 10 years ago, like Yo! MTV Raps and Unplugged. As MTV plugs into its second decade, it remains a force. It is now available in 40 countries and 194 million households. Apparently, for better or for worse, people still want their MTV. And joining us this morning to celebrate and critique MTV's first colorful decade is Martha Quinn, an original MTV video jockey, or VJ, also Jim Henke, music editor uh, for Rolling Stone magazine. And good morning to both of you. You were a, a music writer back then, I believe, for Rolling Stone, and along comes this brand new thing. Here you are, one of the very first VJs there, the first. I feel like, yeah, it's the 10th anniversary. Bring out the old relic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quinn's still know? around. <clears throat> did you... Did you have any inkling at the time what it was going to be, how big it was going to be? Uh, I think that MTV married two such very powerful mediums. It was almost a, why didn't I think of that? You know, music had been on television for quite a while, as Dick Clark well knows, but not only did it marry rock and roll with television, but television with the 24-hour rock and roll radio format. I mean, we all remember sneaking our transistor radio underneath the covers at night and listening to Murray the K, our cousin Brucey. And with, with it now, with MTV, we have it 24 hours a day as well. Now we're saying, turn off the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think it was going to be that big or that it was like, oh, you know, this is another little flashy, trendy thing? Well, I was here in New York at the time, and actually, oddly enough, you couldn't get MTV in New York oh, yeah. or L.A. when it first started, so... <laughs> You know, That's me, kind of bizarre. Uh, exactly, and so I you know, virtually missed it. Well, it's actually not bizarre because cable has always been in rural areas. And so when we started, there were very few cable companies who said, what is this? And it's a what? It's a 24-hour music channel and videos That'll all never the time. Work. That'll never work. And a few, only about 2.5 million households had MTV in the beginning, and now we're in something like... 201 million around the world. I think 56% of America gets it. Yeah. Now, you were, you went and auditioned for this. Did you even know what a VJ was when you saw the, you know, an audition opening for a VJ? Well, actually, I was an intern at WNBC Radio, and somebody had said, oh, this new channel, you should go audition, and they described it as 24-hour radio on TV, essentially, and I thought, like, I was thinking like WKRP in Cincinnati, yeah, you know, and I said, you, I said, what, what do I do during the, the records? That's right. And they were like, no, 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 it's videos. And I was like, what? Oh, that <laughs> well, is we, a pretty good idea. It just so happens that we have a clip of your very first appearance there. <laughs> These are, this is the opening <laughs> moments of MTV back on August 1st, oh, 1981. The music will continue nonstop on MTV Music Television, the newest component of your stereo system. All right. It's I think I still have that to... top. <laughs> <laughs> now, five years ago, they let you go. I mean, they fired you. Was it five years ago? I don't think so. I think it was just three years three ago. Three years ago, yeah. and then you went off and you did, I, you were, did the new Brady Bunch thing. I, you did did the, I remember a pizza commercial you did. But yes. then they said, come back. 
Now, did you make them pay for doing that to you, I hope? <laughs> well, how does one tactfully answer that question? <laughs> yeah, they did. They asked me back, which was really very nice, and they've treated me very well. You know, I guess they figured, uh, you know, we want somebody who, who was there in the early days, and uh, I drew the straw of all the five originals between me and Nina Blackwood and <laughs> Alan Hunter, Mark Goodman, and J.J. Jackson. She got the power. How powerful is MTV? I think it's safe to say MTV is the most powerful uh, medium in promoting records today. It's more powerful. It can powerful. make or break a record or It certainly artist. can. It certainly well, can. how powerful am I, Jim? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll think about that one for a moment. We'll go to commercial. We'll come back, and then we will continue our conversation with MTV VJ, the powerful Martha Quinn, and Rolling Stone music editor Jim Hankey. When Good Morning America continues. <laughs> And we are back celebrating MTV's 10th anniversary with Rolling Stone music editor Jim Henke and also MTV VJ Martha Quinn. And we were just talking about it's, it's the chances of, of a, an artist getting a hit without being on MTV is not very likely today, right? It's very small. I mean, MTV, it works both ways. If MTV decides it wants to break an act, I think in the last year, Faith No More, uh, the Black Crows, Sinead O'Connor, all these people, I think, owe their success to MTV. Alice in Chains. Yeah. On the other you know, hand... It's, it's, you know, here, we have, here we have something that seemed like it was on the cutting edge. It's always on the cutting edge. I mean, it changed commercials. It changed the way people do movies. And yet they were also seemed to be slow in, in putting black artists on. I remember Michael Jackson. I mean, it seemed like they lagged behind in some ways and when they were supposed to be always on the cutting edge. I, I think some of that is that the people who started MTV came from an FM radio AOR background, uh, which is really white rock and roll. And I think when they started that, you know, the station... I took them a while to say catch up. white rock and roll. I would just say rock and roll. I mean, if you listen to your classic rock station now, you're not going to hear uh, the urban contemporary music. Yeah. You know, it's really a question of format that we were opting to go with at the time. But I think the person who changed it really was Michael Jackson. I think when Thriller came out and yeah. was such a big record. Yeah, he broke, he broke that, that he really barrier. Broke through. And, I, and I have to say on MTV's behalf now, I think rap music wouldn't be as popular as it is without MTV. I Probably think like, not. You know, MTV and, raps is And really, in all different areas yeah. of the country. Well, there's this, this uh, programming team that decides what goes on, what doesn't go on. And there are some who say that maybe there are artists who, would, who are really good but they just don't have the style to be on TV that might be kept out because of it, the importance of MTV. Would I'm you say interested that? to hear what you have to say. Well, I think there's no question that MTV has put a lot of emphasis on the look and the image, and I think there are people who have gotten through. I mean, Millie Vanilli being the most notorious example of someone who, you know, was just a packaged product, really had no musical ability. And there are a lot of other people like Paula Abdul and and some of the sort of you know pretty boy metal bands like Warrant that uh, I think succeed in a large way because of their look. Um, well, and their ability I, I to have dance to and move. disagree with you on both of those points. I think uh, "Blame It on the Rain" by Millie Vanilli. Maybe it wasn't those two particular guys, but the when you put in the tape, the Millie Vanilli songs. And I'm speaking as somebody who went out and bought that tape. There were decent little pop songs. Maybe it wasn't those two particular guys, well, but it was the still. Issue. I think that's the issue. You think that's the issue as opposed to... You, well, the fact that, these, I mean, you that were everyone thought that, it was the, you know, these two guys who were making the record. And the, the, the style, the or style you got referred, them on. You referred to Warrant as well, and I think that they also have good, good songs. You I get the feeling that, that these two are going to go back after the commercial and argue <laughs> no. this one out. I think we're going to just break. We'll go to commercial. We'll let you two argue this one out. We'll be back in just a moment.